here at Gonzaga. I'm an admission counselor, so I work with students from San Diego, Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, and then Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. So um, kind of all over the place. We have today, we're going to talk to you about our sport management kinesiology programs a little bit. Um, we have faculty with us. We have Dr. Ryan Turcott, and then we have student Cam Stewart, a current senior in the program. I'll let them introduce themselves in a second, but um, we're going to talk for about, I don't know, eight to 10 minutes about the program, do an introduction. And then this is, we have until about noon, so uh, noon Pacific, if you're from outside of the time zone, uh, 12 to 12.05 and you'll go back to the student panel, which is gonna be exciting as well. So I will let um, Dr. Ryan Turcott introduce himself. All right, thank you, Matt. Yeah, my name is Dr. Ryan Turcott. Uh, this is my second year teaching at Gonzaga. Uh, let's see, I got my PhD at the University of Georgia in 2017. Um, and then I taught in uh, New York City at a private university for two years. And then uh, luckily Gonzaga hired me uh, in 2018. So yeah, this is my second year. Um, and just loving it so far. Uh, love the colleagues, love the students, and uh, really looking forward to uh, giving you a short presentation, short presentation today and, and uh, answering questions and just kind of seeing where everybody's at uh, kind of with this process. So um, should I let Cam also jump in here? Yeah. Okay, Cam, it. all you. Yeah, hi guys. Um, my name is Cam. I'm a senior from Pasadena, California. Um, I'm a sport management major, and then I have two minors, one in promotions and another in leadership studies. Um, I know we also have another professor on here as well, Dr. Calkins, who's just jumped in, so we can let her go ahead and introduce herself as well. Hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Calkins. I teach in the kinesiology program, and uh, I also uh, help with the teacher certification for the health and physical education students. Awesome. Thank you. So like I mentioned upon logging in, we're going to have the faculty talk about their programs for a total of about, I don't know, eight to 12 minutes, introduce you to what we can offer you as a student, and then take your questions until about 12, 12.05. And uh, yeah, we're just here for you today. So um, Dr. Calkins or Dr. Turcott, whoever wants to start, feel free to give your presentation. All right, I'll jump in, Dr. Calkins, that's okay? Yep, you already are set to go, so go okay. for it. Sounds great. All right. So yeah, I'm going to talk about sports management. So, you know, our department is called sports um, and physical education. Uh, and uh, we are, uh, you know, basically split into two, you know, two sides, if you will, uh, kind of the sport management side and then the kinesiology side, which uh, Dr. Calkins will talk about. So I'm going to focus more on sports management. And uh, sports management uh, has been around Gonzaga for a while. We're, we're one of the first in the Pacific Northwest to have this program. Uh, we also have a master's program, which again is one of the first in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and we, we've seen some great growth. We've seen, uh, you know, new faculty hire. We've seen new courses being added. Uh, we've really grown our internship programs, you know, both within Spokane uh, and also across the country and also a couple internationally. Uh, and also we, we've really grown and in, in utilized our alumni base. And so we really have a lot of good things going for us, right? You know, on, on top of uh, you know, being affiliated with, you know, um, a nationally ranked uh, men's and women's basketball programs, uh, you know, very successful athletics department. Uh, that definitely works for us as well as, as students uh, are able to experience that and also work in, in uh, collegiate athletics, you know, at, at a very elite level. So yeah, um, I'll just kind of walk through a little bit of kind of the curriculum, a little bit of the internships, uh, and then I'll probably pass it over to Dr. Calkins here and then we'll, we can kind of field some questions. So just kind of some nice photos here. Uh, if, if you haven't been to campus, uh, I'm not sure if, if the people on Zoom have or not, uh, but we have the McCarthy Athletic Center, which is where uh, we house the, uh, our gymnasium or where the, the men's and women's basketball team plays. Uh, we have the, the baseball field, which is right near the McCarthy Center. Uh, we have our, our beloved statue of, of the Bulldog right in front of McCarthy. And also I believe this is our intramural field, uh, which is right, uh, is, is a turf field right um, by Hemmingson uh, Center and also by kind of the, the library and, and the McCarthy Center. So uh, just a kind of a couple photos to give you some insight into, into, into campus. Next. Oops. Okay, so a little bit about our program, um, sport management, you know, and, and I also think a lot of this too is, is very similar to Dr. Calkins and what she'll kind of talk about. And, and that's just, you know, we have smaller class sizes, right? We are not Washington State, we are not 
you know, Cal Berkeley or USC, um, you know, where you're going to have hundreds of, of students in a lecture hall class. Uh, we're smaller. We're, we've had, we have smaller class sizes. We're a smaller university, uh, and that really works to our advantage. We, we really get to know our students, uh, which is really important for us getting to know, uh, you know, their names, where they're from, their story, their goals, uh, you know, what they're interested in going in. Um, you know, kind of their strengths and weaknesses. I, I, feel, I feel like that's very important for professor student relationship and a lot of universities miss the boat on, on this. And, and this is really one of the strengths of, of our universities. We're able to really consult and work um, individually with our students and, and really kind of, um, you know, hear, hear what they're interested in and hear what they're, uh, you know, focused on. So uh, we strive to create collaborative hands-on classroom experiences directly linked to discovering the students professional aspirations, um, a lot of active learning. If, if I can uh, paraphrase Dr. Calkins, she's always talking about active learning versus passive learning. Uh, I really take that to heart when I'm teaching in the classroom to make sure, uh, you know, there, there's engagement, there's discussion, uh, you know, is, is there, can we, can we create a debate? Uh, what's happening in sports today? What's happening in sports management? You know, a lot is going on in, in the sports world today. So uh, I, I bring that into the class and, and make it the, the active learning environments um, and, 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 you know, having that small class size really um, allows us to, to really listen to each other and really get into some interesting debates about you know, everything that's happening in sports today. Uh, our faculty and staff, we have a lot of di diverse experiences in the sports industry um, in terms of networking, but also for teaching. And I'll talk about kind of our teaching backgrounds here uh, in, in future slides. Uh, but, you know, we have people with, with background in sports marketing, with background in sports law. Uh, background in, in sports and diversity, uh, sports and society, sports and sociology. So um, a, a really good mix, a really good kind of nucleus to really kind of spearhead sport management and really look at it from, you know, a multitude of different angles, which I think you need going into this profession. Uh, you, you know, you, you can't just be focused on one entity, even if you want to work in sports finance, you need to be well versed in these other areas. And so that's why we really have uh, some, some faculty and staff from, from across the board, as I said, that really uh, is able to, you know, give these diverse experiences uh, within, within uh, the classroom. So uh, a little bit about our curriculum. Um, as I said, it's, it's, it's very well rounded. We, we, we've adjusted it. We, we've, you know, we, we're constantly going back to the drawing board to seeing, you know, what uh, do our students need? What, what is the industry, uh, you know, currently offering, you know, what are upcoming trends, right, in terms of the job market, in terms of uh, entrepreneurism, right? So there's a lot to kind of look at in terms of the curriculum, but this is just kind of our foundation. And, and, and you know, these, these are listed here, sports promotion, sponsorship, uh, ethical and legal aspects, uh, sports and psychological aspects of sport, uh, facility management, uh, the digital age, which is very big now, um, both in sports and in fitness, right? Especially in, in the COVID era, um, a lot of, you know, interest and research kind of fluctuating around that. Uh, sports and activity in a, in a diverse society, again, you know, a, a, big, a big one there, an important one, and that kind of touches on my research. A lot of my research goes into sports and diversity. So again, you know, I think um, myself, Dr. Smith, Dr. Rickle, uh, Dr. Bailey in sport management, we really try to utilize our research, bring it into the classroom um, to, uh, you know, get a good discussions about the research process and really give students a glimpse into that. And, you know, we've, we've been lucky, lucky enough to also engage with some research with our students. You know, I have a lot of students interested in sports analytics, uh, students want to work in the front office and with professional teams. So we're, we're able to, you know, work with, with research that I've done or other professors, but also bring in research that's really relevant to their particular interest. So the, the research piece is also a big, um, uh, focus of ours is, is we want to get students engaged with that, uh, with really dealing with um, you know evidence-based research. Uh, most of our students, uh, you know, they get minors that really uh, supplement their sport management major. Um, kind of what what uh, Cam was saying with, with her uh, majors and minors. Uh, most of our students get business communication studies, uh, promotions, journalism. Uh, you know, those are kind of the most popular ones. We'll, we'll get some other types of minors, but for the most part. Uh, you know, these, these four really are the most popular and, and the, um, as I said, the, the best supplements to really, um, you know, give you a different perspective, maybe outside of sports uh, and, and give you maybe a little bit more focus, you know, if you do want to focus on accounting with business or maybe marketing with business. 
or if you want to go into media and, and you, you want to work on your, your, your writing and, be, and focus more on uh, being a broadcaster or a, or a sports reporter, then you want to get that minor in promotion or journalism. So I, I think those are always going to be nice to supplement um, in the major. Uh, but 128 credits in total to graduate uh, currently is where we're at. Uh, uh, and again, this is just kind of a quick little glimpse into the, uh, into the curriculum. Uh, last couple slides here, then I'll jump, I'll throw it over to Dr. Calkins. Uh, but we do have, um, as I said, a, a, a really, really, uh, you know, interesting internship uh, opportunities. And, and, and I guess more than interesting, it's, it's very uh, in-depth and it's also, um, it, it's, it's, it's growing and it's expanding. You know, we, we're really utilizing our, our alumni networks, uh, we're really utilizing our former students who have go, gone on to get jobs with some of these uh, organizations and teams listed here, using them to you know, help our current students get connected, um, help them get an internship, help them get their foot in the door, uh, as networking is very, very crucial in sports management. Uh, and so we try to really capitalize on you know, the, the uh, really um, you know, big Gonzaga alumni network and also kind of our, our, our brand name and, and getting into you know, different parts of, of the country, right? We've had students work with the Kansas City Royals uh, we've had students work with the uh, with Atlanta United MLS team in Atlanta. So, you know, I, I think that those kind of exemplify how the Gonzaga brand works well for students. They're able to really get out there and, and find different internships. Uh, and we also have some very, very um, um, impactful and interesting sports events in Spokane. This photo here isn't a great one, but it shows you what Spokane Hoop Fest is. Spokane Hoop Fest is the biggest three and three tournament in the world. Um, and it's right in our backyard. It's in downtown Spokane. Didn't happen this summer because of COVID. Uh, it will be back, uh, but there's so many great learning opportunities for event management, for sports, for everything. So, uh, and then also Blooms Day is, is one of the biggest road races of the year. Uh, seven mile race in uh, early May uh, draws usually over 100,000 people. We have students working with that as well. So just a, a couple of examples there with internships. Uh, this is just a couple of our, uh, our faculty. And these are our full-time faculty members, uh, Dr. Bailey, Dr. Rickle, Dr. Smith, and myself, but we also have uh, a lot of adjunct faculty um, from the Spokane area. Um, you know, we've had people from Spokane YMCA, uh, the GM for the Spokane Indians in town. He is teaching a couple classes with us, sport finance, uh, and he also does a lot of guest speaker appearances. Um, and we also, you know, Dr. Calkins will maybe tell you about some other adjuncts that we're bringing in uh, just to kind of uh, you know, diversify our faculty and, and make sure we're getting, um, you know, um, some different perspectives in, in the classroom. So uh, with that, I think I talked to maybe a little bit too long, um, but that's, uh, that's all I got for now. So I can pass it over to either Cam or Dr. Calkins or whoever uh, is ready to talk next. We'll go to Dr. Calkins real quick. Do you have slides prepared or you just want to chat about kinesiology? Uh, I have some slides, yes. Yeah, so oh, You should be able to override share screen if you want to do that. All right. Thank you. Is it showing? Yep. All right, good. Thank you, Cam, for giving me the thumbs up. Uh, Cam was one of my students in my sport uh, and exercise psychology class. So Cam, it's good to see you again. So yes, I'm Dr. Nicole Calkins, and um, I teach on the kinesiology side. So we have two degree so that you can get, right? So Dr. Chercott just talked about sport management and then we also have kinesiology. So I'm gonna try and help you understand maybe why you should pick one over the other um, and what a little bit of the differences are. So our degree is a uh, bachelor's of education in kinesiology. And now we have uh, three different tracks that you can choose concentrations within our degree. So um, you can just get a degree in kinesiology. And of course you could also minor, let's say in sport management, but you can get specialists, uh, fitness specialist. You can get health and physical education pedagogy, or you can get teacher certification. So we put these as optional because you do not have to choose a concentration, but it's highly recommended that you do to specialize yourself in one area. So if you um, want to be like a, a strength and conditioning specialist, we would say to pick the fitness specialist route. If you're interested in teaching or coaching, we would say to pick the health and physical education pedagogy route. So we have two faculty that teach uh, primarily in our kinesiology program. So this is my fifth year at Gonzaga and I teach primarily the classes that deal um, with motor learning, uh, with pedagogy, 
um, with instructional methods. I also teach the exercise and sports psychology class. So I was a certified health and physical education teacher. I taught in South Seattle. Uh, does anyone know where Mount Rainier High School is? I taught there for 15 years. So uh, I'm just wondering, cause that's kind of South Seattle. I get, usually get a number of students um, who are from that area. So I taught in Mount Rainier High School for 15 years before I came to Gonzaga. Um, I'm a certified strength and uh, conditioning coach and then also a certified personal trainer. So I have a lot of experience within the field in terms of instructing sport and uh, fitness activities. And then Dr. Burris, who is the other faculty member, he is a certified ACSM exercise physiologist and he teaches the anatomy and physiology, the exercise physiology labs. So with our degree, if you're interested in becoming uh, an athletic trainer, a strength and conditioning coach, a sports coach, um, even if you're interested possibly in looking at exercise physiology, which might be working in like a cardiac rehab center, this is the, the degree that you would want to take. So um, sport management is one where if you're working, you don't work primarily with the athletes. And I can't remember if Dr. Turcott mentioned this, but usually you're working around the events with sport management. If you're someone who wants to be working with athletes, working with uh, individuals, doing hands-on, um, kinesiology is, is the degree for you. So we help you understand um, what it's like to be the coach, what it's like to be the trainer. Um, with athletic training, our degree does prepare students for that. We have a number of students who are in graduate programs now because for athletic training, you have to go to a, for a master's degree. Um, but we have all of the prerequisite courses for that particular um, graduate program. So, and then we also do, uh, you can choose to do undergraduate um, teaching certification. So we have a number of students who are doing that. Um, we also have a master's initial teaching. So we have a number of students who go through our program thinking that they do not wanna be teachers, but after the program, they're like, oh, actually I may want to teach. Um, just so that you are aware, there's a lot of differences in teaching nowadays. So we prepare you to teach virtually and also prepare you to teach uh, in person. So just with you know everything that's going on, you'll be able to teach it in those various modalities. Um, but you can, if you choose, we have a one-year master's program. So you could leave Gonzaga um, in five years uh, with a fitness specialist concentration. And then you could also be certified to teach so you have a number of options with our degree in terms of uh, your capability to go into careers, um, whether it's teaching, whether it's coaching. Um, and then if you get certified as a teacher, we, you, it isn't, isn't in just the state of Washington, it's for every state. So we have reciprocity among states. So if you're someone who's from Colorado, you get certified in Washington, that still works in Colorado. So that's not anything uh, to be concerned about. We do have a brand new kinesiology lab. So these are some pictures of our students um, actually working in the labs right now. So you can see they're doing some VO max testing. So, um, you know, if you are interested in going into the exercise physiologist uh, way, we also prepare you for that as well. And these are a few more of our students in our, in our lab. Um, and I'll just finish, this is my last slide. Um, so you can just see in terms of the classes that we have for our degree. So we are just starting our new degree um, this semester actually. So we went through uh, uh, revising our courses. So we have a total of 40 uh, degree or credits for our degree. And then you can choose, you can see the options as far as fitness specialist um, and then health and physical education concentration. So um, you can see courses are strength and conditioning, anatomy and physiology, uh, motor development learning. These are the types of courses that you would take within our degree. Cool, thank you very much, Dr. Calkins. Yep. We can start having questions come into the chat. Cam, do you just wanna give a, like a three minute overview on what it's like to be a student in these programs? Yeah, of course. So when I first came into Gonzaga, I came in as a psychology major, actually, um, and then switched into the sport management program, I want to say my second semester of freshman year. 
it was absolutely the best decision that I've made um, as I've had Dr. Calkins along with a bunch of amazing other professors that I learned so much from, um, not just in the field of sport, but just like how to be a better leader in general and how to apply those leadership skills outside of the classroom as well. Um, but coming in, you usually start off with um, an EDPE 190 course, which is foundations in sport and Dr. Calkins or Dr. Turcotte, correct me if I'm wrong, but everyone who is in the um, physical education, kinesiology, sport management program has to take that class um, just as that initial introduction. Um, and through that, you kind of get to decide what path you want to take, whether or not you want to focus a little bit more on kinesiology or the sport management side of things. Um, so I focused on the sport management side. Um, and here I am as a senior. I'm in my second internship as we speak. Both times I've had the pleasure of interning with Gonzaga Athletics. Um, so last semester I focused on game day promotions and marketing. And this semester, considering sports are non-existent on our campus, um, I have the pleasure of working with our email marketing and management as, long, or as well as data analytics, which has been super interesting as we shift into a different program. Um, but this program has been absolutely amazing. Uh, a great addition to Gonzaga and my Gonzaga career, I guess you can say, but the courses are great. The class sizes are small, so you have the opportunity to connect with the people, other students in the program and professors. Um, and your advisors are often checking in on you just to make sure that you're on track to graduate on time, you're finding those internships, you're registering for the right classes, um, whether or not they want to set up a four-year plan with you or take it semester by semester, so. Cool. Thank you. Um, I'll give it a minute if anyone wants to sit in some questions, but if you don't have any, I'll find some to ask, no problem. Uh, cool, so we'll give it a second. It's also Saturday, here we go. How would you become a student manager of one of the Gonzaga teams? Um, and I'll leave it to both programs or one program. Go for it. Um, yes. Uh, for any kind of internship with um, Gonzaga Athletics, there, there is like an interview process. And maybe Cam can speak a little bit to that. But um, I know like to get um, internships as managers or in our marketing, like the, it is – you know, it's very competitive. And so you have to go through an interview process, you have to apply. So those types of things are just not given. So once you see, and usually, and actually it goes through the career center. So we are not in charge of assigning those internships. So while you do the credits with our department, anything to do with getting an internship or being like a student manager of those teams, you have to apply for similar to applying for a job and it goes through the career center. So we help to prepare you in our program, particularly in the 190 class to get your resume ready, to do the interviews, to get the, you know, the opportunity to do those competitive internships. But really it just comes down to applying and getting that type of position. Yeah, and I'll just, I'll just add, that was Dr. Calkins. She, she covered that uh, very well. I would just add to that. Um, yeah, the, these, these positions are competitive, but they also are attainable. Um, and I think one, one piece of advice I've talked to my students about is, is, you know, obviously every student that comes to Gonzaga wants to be the basketball manager, right? Like men's or women's. But the thing is with sport management students is that you actually have, uh, you know, less competition and you have a better chance to get something if you look at an, a different sport. So looking at women's soccer, looking at men's tennis, you know, looking at uh, cross country or, you know, any of these sports, they all have managers. And, and you know, chances are, uh, you know, there'll be an internship with that that we can set you up. So uh, there's definitely those types of opportunities. Um, like Dr. Calkin said, very competitive for the basketball um, position. And, and for all these, you have to go through that, the, the, the interview process, which, which she said we really prepare you for. Um, but my, my kind of piece of advice, and so far we've had success, is to look at other sports besides just men's and women's basketball, because it's so competitive to get those. So um, Cam, if you would add anything with kind of with your with your experience. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the um, process that it takes to be a, a manager for a, an athletic team here, um, but I do know for the athletic internships, either with marketing and promotions, facilities, um, 
video production, stuff like that, generally what you will do, like what Dr. Calkin says, is you will connect with our career and professional development office um, and they will go through the process with you, looking over that resume, helping you write your cover letter, um, and then also throwing some interview questions at you just to get you a little bit um, better prepared. Generally, I know Dr. Rickle, who is the department chair, always says to wait usually up until your junior or senior year until you start those internships, just so that way you have a little bit more of a foundation underneath your feet um, and you're not just jumping in, not knowing what to expect or um, what to do because that can be really tough sometimes. Um, but generally the process is two interviews. It'll start with a group interview and then there's a second round of one-on-one -on -one final interviews, either in person or virtual, depending on what the world has in store for us. Um, but then once you have that final interview, they'll report back to you, giving you the, either offering you the position or not. Um, and then from there, you kind of play this waiting game until the next season to start that position. And you get to make that decision of what sector of video production, game day promotions, marketing, stuff like that you want to work in. And the people in charge of that department will help you find a space. Oh, thank you. I haven't seen any come in. I think that obviously the big part about this program is the goal for students is to work, whether it's in kinesiology or if it's in sport, they want to work in that field. So how would you describe um, kind of career outcomes, the connection Gonzaga alumni help with that and how faculty in the career center guide students to faculty or grad students to alumni for either informational interviews or summer opportunities. Um, how would you describe that alumni connection? How essential is it? Because I know that networking in sport is pretty essential. So how would you describe the kind of, the, oh, here we go, Never mind. How many undergrad students are in each program? We'll go to that one first. So in the kinesiology program, there's about 50 right now. Um, so in that, and just so you get a sense in terms of how many students are in a class. So right now I'm teaching motor development. I have 37, which is the most I've ever had in a class. I'm also teaching team sports. We have about 15 students in a class. So um, the range is between 10 usually to 30 within our classes. Um, but we, we, we average between 50 to 60 students in the kinesiology program. Yeah, and Dr. Calkins, I might need your help. I'm not sure if I know the exact number. I, I'm, uh, you know, I, I should probably know that as, as a new professor. Uh, I think we're we're maybe just a little bit bigger than than kinesiology. Um, Quite a bit, just, yeah. Maybe Dr. Calkins could talk on this better than me. I think. Uh, I think it might be right around 150. I feel like, and it, sometimes it's hard to know with sport management because people shift back and forth between majoring, minoring, pretty much pretty frequently. And mm -hmm. it's, um, I think part of that has to do with, we have a number of students who start in business and then come over. And so, but I, it, it is more than double the size of the kinesiology, I, I feel so. Yeah, you're, yeah, she's right. It is around 150. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. And I, I did just read, I think last week, I think sport management is, is number five in terms of number of ma uh, minors at Gonzaga. Sport management is number five. So just like you said, uh, get, get a lot of um, interest there, you know, from the minor level, so. Thank you. Um, yeah, so nothing came in. Let's talk quick about alumni connections, networking, and Cam, if you have any experience talking with alumni and how helpful that is with this program, because the Gonzaga alumni, like, they are a very proud bunch, to say the least, and love helping each other out. Oh, well, no, never mind, we got a different one. For technology, um, how much hands-on experience? Yes. So I'll speak to that, Jennifer. Um, there is a lot of hands-on opportunities. So I actually, in, in one of the pictures of my slide showed um, my students right now, we are face-to-face, -face. we are on the field. Um, we are in person, we are doing teaching each other. Um, we are doing you know learning sports skills with the equipment. So all of my classes, students are, are doing things, teaching each other, learning how to coach each other. Um, and so I would say the hands-on experience is, is definitely uh, one of our strong suits in terms of that. Um, and then the same thing with the labs, like if you're to go into the clinical setting, you know, we have that lab. And so you're getting hands-on experience as far as running that equipment, doing
doing those VO max testings. Um, and I think one of the best things, as Dr. Turcott was saying, is our small class sizes allow us to be able to do that more. So I know every single student, you know, in our kinesiology program. I don't know how many other, right, like program directors can say that about their entire program, but I know every student by name in our kinesiology program. We send them emails. I'm constantly, you know, telling them like, here are opportunities. So I'll kind of go into what Matt was saying is if something comes up in terms of people will connect with us and say, we have this job position, we have this internship, um, or we have this job. Um, I will think through and, and send specific emails to students saying, I think this will be a great opportunity for you. And of course, we always send those out to everyone, but I will make sure that the students that I have, if I think that this is something that's, that's good for them, um, that they do. I also, before COVID, I've taken a number of students to conferences to present. Um, and so within like the, the physical education realm, this gives districts an opportunity to see my students teaching. And a number of my students have gotten jobs because they went to conferences. They'd show that they're actually very good teachers in these presentations. And districts say, we want to hire your students. So I could just say on the physical education side, I consistently get emails um, from this large network of people because I taught in the field for 15 years. that they're like, do you have a student? Like they want to have Gonzaga students. They know that our program is strong. Um, and so oftentimes there's actually a lot of physical education jobs that are not filled because there's such a need for it. Um, but if you graduate from our program in physical education, you will get a job right when you're done. Like I can't 100% guarantee that, but that's just been the reality for the past since I've been here five years. Yeah, and I can jump in, Matt. I see the next question here from Diego. Uh, great question, Diego. Uh, uh, and, and Matt, cut me off if we get short on time, or I'm not sure where we're at with time. We probably got time for one question after this, uh, depending on the question. So feel free to answer this one at your leisure. Okay, great. Yeah, so um, similar to Dr. Culkin's, uh, you know, hands-on experience is crucial for sports management. We have to get into uh, event management. We have to go to the facility. We have to talk to athletes. We have to talk to facilitators, coaches. Um, and so, you know, I think one misconception about sport management is that you know, if I just watch Sports Center, I'm an I'm an expert of sport, right? Well, that's that's not the case. You got to do more than that. We got to get you to the event. You need to see everything behind the scenes for you know a, a, a mega event like a Seattle Seahawks game or a Super Bowl or you know the Spokane Indians, uh, you know, regular season game or a Gonzaga women's basketball game, right? You need to see the behind the scenes action. So it's crucial for us. So just one thing I'll talk about is is kind of the also bring in Matt's. Uh, alumni question is that every spring break we have a trip uh, where we go um, to a, a big U.S. city. Uh, we were planning to go to Las Vegas this year to visit uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, we were going to uh, go to the WCC tournament. We were going to meet with the Las Vegas Aces, the WNBA team, um, also the NHL team, the Golden Knights. We had all these ready, facilitated. We were, we were taking about 12 students down. I was going to uh, take them down as the, the faculty rep and just do all networking and just see all the behind the scenes stuff. And so um, it was actually the week right before COVID hit. I think Tom Hanks and Rudy Gobert got COVID like the week before the trip. So that was like the big COVID moment where everyone like just stopped. So uh, that didn't happen for us, but it was, we were just, I mean, we were, we literally had like our bags packed, our tickets ready and the students were so excited and then very bummed when they found out we couldn't go. Uh, but Dr. Smith uh, organizes that, the director of our master's program. We also go to Phoenix. Uh, we've looked into, into going into uh, Houston and Dallas in the future, but we do have a, a lot of Gonzaga alum and, and kind of a big network in Las Vegas. I think because the WCC tournament is there for some reason, there's just a Gonzaga contingency there. So I think once COVID settles down, uh, we'll definitely be going back. We'll definitely be implementing this program because we got to get these students networking and, and, and have them meeting with uh, people behind the scenes and getting that hands-on experience. Cool, thank you. Um, we've got about five more minutes for questions. Um, anyone wanna send one in kind of to cap all this off? And I'll, I'll just talk a little bit more because the hands-on experience, you know, seems to be a, a, a big thing is you know, I, I can speak for our program and also for, you know, sport management is we try and give as many opportunities that you're actually doing it. So 
when you come to my class on motor development, I'm not just lecturing on motor development. Like you're out on the field with equipment, learning how to do these things. Um, and I know on the sport management side, when we did, um, you know, when they teach the 190 class, it's, you know, you're learning to do interviews, you're learning through like how to communicate through activities. So um, it's not just sit back and listen. Um, even in this era of Zoom, um, I'm still having my students teach if they have to be on Zoom. Most of my classes are face to face, though, but you're still doing as much as you can with the equipment that you have. Um, and I'm making sure my students who are Zoom only have that equipment. So if they need a tennis racket, I'm shipping them a tennis racket so that they can do the activities from their own home, right? So I would say, you know, definitely probably our program more than, than most is you're going to be, you know, you're coaching athletes. Uh, I worked with a number of school systems. We've worked with different kinds of programs, uh, recreational centers where we're going and working with athletes as part of your class. So you're not just sitting in a classroom learning about how to do this. You're doing it with other athletes and with other students to learn how to do this professional experience. Thank you. Um, anything more from anyone? Questions? Um, Cam, how prepared do you feel for post-grad life? The, the great question that seniors love. Funny you might ask. Um, I'm spending this entire day working on grad school applications. Um, something that I've like shifted gears in is I want to go into a program that focuses on marketing communications or strategic communications. Um, but I feel pretty prepared just because I have such an amazing advisor who's constantly checking in, making sure that, you know, I'm doing okay mentally and also I'm where I need to be in order to graduate in May. Um, and just also helping me prepare for those interviews and the application process as well. It's been really great with our program. I know that Matt, you kind of touched on this and so did Dr. Turcott and Dr. Calkins, but we have a, such a great alumni connection and a lot of them tend to come back for either um, guest speaker series or something along those lines and talk a little bit about their process and what they did um, and where they are now. And that has been really helpful too, just to have those connections and foster that community a little bit more, even if it is virtual. Awesome. Um, are you applying nationally, kind of staying regionally? You're from Pasadena, so all over. That is a very loaded question. Um, I, <laughs> I think I want to stay on the West Coast. I don't want to stray too far away from home, but I also have a feeling that most of my classes will be online, so it doesn't really matter where I end up because I'll be living with my parents. So <laughs> that University of Denver is probably my top choice right now, so. Pioneers, right? I think so. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 the pioneers. Uh, Dr. Calkins put her email in the chat if you would like to reach out to her. Um, Dr. Turcott did as well. So the student panel is going to start at about 1020. I am going to put a link in the chat that will take you to the student panel. It is likely you will not be admitted into that until about 1020 by our host. So um, I'm going to put it in there for you if you do want to click on it. But we can hang, if you want to head out, go for it. We can hang out for a couple minutes and answer any other questions you have. But thank you for joining us today. Glad you're joining us for the preview day. We had nearly 300 people register. So it's a big event for us. And we're always happy to speak with Prospective Zegs. So have a great day. And thank you for joining us. <laughs>